Red eye crocodile skinks happen to be one of my favorite animals to work with in captivity. They're some of the most beautiful animals on this planet. Very rewarding species to work with. Today, we're going to be talking about what it takes to keep these animals happy and healthy. I'm your boy Smith. This is All Things Living. Let's go! talk Cajun requirements for a minute. It's gonna change heavily depending on the size of your animal. If you have a baby, the Cajun is gonna be a lot different than if you have um, an adult or an adult pair. A baby, I would recommend keeping in something as small as a 10 gallon. Don't give them too much water. You want, you want your enclosure to be able to breathe, but you want it to hold humidity also. How you go about that is up to you. For something small, like I said, a 10 gallon enclosure is perfect for a baby, even smaller. Um, would be perfect for a uh, baby red eye crocodile skin. But as you get bigger, um, if you have an adult, you could use something as um, small as a 20 gallon. 20 gallons are like perfect size, uh, not only for the animal, but for, for you, like getting in and working inside the enclosure. But if you wanna give them something bigger, they'll also use all of that space too. I had my original pair in a 75 gallon tank and they were in a different place every day together. It really just depends on how much space you have and how much space you wanna give them. Uh, for babies, security is of utmost importance. They stress out easily. Uh, Red-eyed crocodile skinks stress out regardless. They stress out real easily. And it's not from like normal things, it's from human interaction. Usually they just wanna be left alone. Do that and give them enough, enough hides and everything in there so they can hide and feel secure. For babies, like I said, you want them to feel very secure so they don't stress out and they eat normally and they grow normally and all of that. How you decide to do your enclosure is up to you. Anything is possible. I've used my uh, my, my first female, I, I got her years ago, three, three and a half years ago. My first female, I kept her in a bin for a little bit because I just could not get humidity right inside the enclosures, but it was right inside the bin and she loved it. Uh, she was there for like seven months before I even got my male. But uh, once I got my male, that's when we started building enclosures and moved, moved the, the pair into an enclosure but I would recommend like I said if you have a baby do something very small 10 gallon tank enclosure if you have a, a pair or even a, just an adult crocodile skink I would give them at least 20 gallons and then from there you can go as far as you want because they'll use all of the space that you give them now let's talk about husbandry or the the parameters inside the enclosure what are we gonna do inside the enclosure to keep these animals happy and healthy. Now your red-eyed crocodile skinks, they're a cool species from New Guinea. They like it relatively cool. Anything above 80 degrees for prolonged periods of time will throw these animals into heat stroke. So you gotta keep them cool. I think it's okay to give them a basking spot, but I keep mine at 73 degrees year round. Haven't had any issues, not to say that, that, that they won't tolerate hotter temperatures or or lower temperatures, but I keep mine at 73 degrees year round. It's babies, that's sub-adults, that's adults, year round 73 degrees. Now, you want to have some type of light source, but these animals are nocturnal. I'm not gonna say they don't come out in the daytime, but they do a lot of their activity at night when, when the lights are off. So it's more beneficial just to make sure that their, their diet has the proper supplement, the proper calcium, and and multivitamins, make sure that they're getting everything that they need because they're not gonna be getting it from, from the UV. Make sure it's humid, about 80% humidity. I found it hard to, to keep humidity in normal enclosures, so now I just build them with like paludarium. I make sure that there's a water feature in their enclosures now, so the soil always has fresh water, so the animals always have fresh water. I find my animals in the water all the time. Having the fresh water for them is, is beneficial, it's enriching, it, it actually helps them be more regular in captivity. Build them a paludarium with, with a about three or four inches of water. Um, I have a, a couple videos on how we do it. It's really, really simple. It, it benefits the animals greatly. They have access to some type of water, multiple hides, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hides, plants galore. The more plants, the more, the more hides, the better. They feel, um, they feel more secure actually coming out. Now my old, uh, yeah, my old male, Clyde, this dude, he's just sleeping out in the open now. He doesn't even, 
He doesn't even care. Not only is he old, but he has security in his enclosure. Now he just sleeps out in the open. It's kind of cool. You want to make sure that these animals are secure. So give them multiple cork hides. Even give them leaf litter, throw some leaf litter down, some moss. Give them opportunities for foraging and digging. They greatly appreciate it and it's nourishing and enriching for these animals to do so. You'll have um, a longer lifespan, overall just better behaved animals. Make sure that you try to replicate the forest floor, 73 degrees, and some type of light. We'll talk about lighting here in a second. We're gonna talk about lighting for a second. Now, seeing as how these animals are primarily nocturnal, they uh, don't spend a lot of time out doing anything in the day. Um, it, I think it'd be more beneficial to, like I said, supplement their food. Make sure their food has the proper supplementation, and then also make sure that you have good lights for growing plants. Uh, you want to light on the, the enclosure regardless to let them know when it's daytime and when it's nighttime, the day and nighttime cycle. Um, and if you want to give them UV, I would also do that. I push for that. Give them UV. They're, it's not going to hurt. Even if they're not out basking, it's not, it's not going to hurt. But I would put my primary focus in my lighting on the plants. So get you a good LED that's going to grow the plants and, and keep them, keep your plants healthy, keep them alive and having healthy plants will make your animals come out more. So the lighting is completely up to you. You can add a basking spot, you can add a UV bar or a UV bulb to, to add extra UVA and UVB to your animals. Um, but me personally, I would go with a, just a nice LED for growing good plants. Either that or just go with a, a, a UV bar, a whole UV bar. I think that would grow plant your, your, I think that would grow your plants pretty well too. As far as lighting goes, it's relatively simple. These, these animals aren't out in the daytime. So you're going to be looking at a bunch of plants most of the day anyway, moving along. All right. Now when it comes to the diet of the red-eyed crocodile skink they eat a couple different things they're uh, primarily insectivores so your crickets your mealworms super worms wax worms things like that but um they also eat regular like earthworms and grubs and things that they, they find in the soil uh, digging on the forest floor I used to do this all the time I would just put earthworms inside the enclosure let them find their own way around and then over time they just disappear your crocodile skinks they'll find them as they're foraging and digging in the in the different areas of the enclosure it's very enriching for them so I, I advise that you do that that would that would actually benefit your animals a lot make sure the food has the calcium and multivitamins that that the animals need because they're not going to get too much of that from the UV like I said they're going to be ducked off a lot of the time so it would be better just to make sure that their diet is properly supplemented and also that you switch it up from time to time some items like wax worms are very high and like they're very fatty and you don't want your animal getting uh, overweight, uh, fatty liver disease. There's there's many different problems that come from that. Yeah, so just switch up the diet. Give them earthworms from, from time to time. Make sure those are clean and uh, make sure that their, their diet is properly supplemented so that your animal can be healthy in the long run so you have them for years and years to come. Moving along. Now we're going to talk about handling. Now these animals stress out a lot or I'm not going to say a lot but they stress out easily when it comes to handling. A lot of people seem to think like when they freeze up like that that they're just they're okay with it they're dealing with that's their coping mechanism for dealing with trauma they're not fine they're, they're not okay uh, you want your crocodile skinks to be alert and and moving at all times and if they're they're frozen that means they're scared you might need to back off unless you're, you're cleaning the enclosure or what whatnot but I keep handling to a minimum I try to tongue feed them from time to time and we leave it at that um, I'm, I'm not handling my animals, taking them out to show people. Uh, crocodile skinks are very solitary animals and they, they would rather just be left alone. Whenever they're in distress, they'll bark and croak. Um, and that's that's your, your first sign. Well, your first sign is that they're just, they just freeze up. They don't, they don't want to deal with anything. Then directly after that, or even before that, sometimes they'll start barking and, and it's time to, to back off. We don't want to stress the animals out. We all know that stress is the number one killer when it comes to any living organism plant animal reptile fit stress kills everything so we want to keep stress to a minimum me personally i don't i don't do too much handling of my crocodile skinks i go in and check on them all the time I'll remove the hides, they'll disappear further into the enclosure. All right, cool, and I'll put the hides back. Just wanna check on everybody and make sure everything's okay. Usually the only time I handle my crocodile skinks is when I'm either cleaning enclosures or updating enclosures, moving animals. Uh, they're not like my leopard geckos or, or my caiman lizard. I'm not pulling these animals out to, to show people they don't prefer it. 
they'd rather be left alone. So I would say these animals don't like to be handled, but if you put in enough work, much like any animal, um, and this this is something we're trying with our animals, we have multiple generations of uh, captive bred crocodile skinks that we're trying this with, but we're, we're just slowly trying to tong feed them and get them, you, they're already used to us, but human interaction, they're, they're just not, no. They're not okay with it. They see us, they, they wanna go further back into their enclosures and be left alone. But we're trying to trying to work with them and get them to come around to actually being, I don't wanna say being handled because we know they don't like that, but being alert and aware when they're out rather than just freezing up. So we're, we're working with them. And like I said, with the, with enough work, anything is possible. I've seen it, so I, I know it's possible. We're just working every day trying to, to make these animals more handleable. But that, like I said, is, isn't the end game. We, we really just want them to be alert at all times and not to freeze up, not to stress out, no barking. And that's enough for us. We don't have to be holding the animals and, and displaying them in that fashion. We keep handling to an absolute minimum. Red Eye Crocodile Skinks really don't like it. Now, those are pretty much the, the parameters for keeping Red Eye Crocodile Skinks, how we do it over here. Now, other people are gonna have success doing things different ways. Um, I'm always open to see how you guys are doing it. And any suggestions, any, any tips, any tricks, anything that I might have missed, go down to the comments, you let me know. You know how I am, I wanna to talk to you guys, you guys are my family. So let me know what you what you guys are doing, what, what success you're having with these animals. We've had ours for years. Um, I started with a female, about a year later I got a male. I've had that pair for about three and a half years. We've had them for a long time now. Clyde was almost three, yeah, about three years when I got him, so he's, he's, he's an old man now. He's, whew. He's an old man, but he's always been good. He's healthy. In a lot of ways, I don't feel qualified to even talk about this subject, but we've had these animals for years, so I figure why not? This is how we're doing it over here. You guys let me know how you're doing it over there. I would love to see your animals and your setups. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the rundown. If I missed anything, like I said, go down bottom, you let me know in the comments. Um, if you learned anything in this video, like, subscribe. There's gonna be many more to come. You'll get to see all of all of my successes and all of my failures. <laughs> that's that's the video. I'm your boy Smith. This is all things living. I'm out.